Hey everyone, today I'm going to say one change I would make to every killer. I want to focus mainly on killer powers for this, and not so much teachables or add-ons. Let's get into it. Starting off with Trapper, I'd like to see his traps inflict either Deep Wound or the Dying State onto people who get trapped whilst injured. This has been suggested by quite a few people, and it's one I fully agree with. Stepping on traps whilst injured is pretty inconsequential, but if they gave you deep wound, the broken status, or put you into the dying state, it would at least be more meaningful than it currently is. Trapper is what he is, so I don't want to suggest anything too extreme as a change. I think this is a fairly reasonable one. Wraith I would like to suggest that a bit like Victor gets, is for him to have bright to blood trails when cloaked, almost like an inbuilt bloodhound. This would be an extremely minor, but useful buff I feel. Maybe it could even have a reverse lightweight effect too, where when cloaked, scratch marks are visible for longer. More tracking basically. Something to add to what is currently just an invisibility power. For Hillbilly, I think his overheat isn't the end of the world, but I would like it to be reduced a bit more. Currently it feels like it can be nearing that overheat point in too short a time. Simple change though though largely Billy is in a pretty good spot I feel. Nurse is a tough one. One thing I would like to see though as some very strange counterplay would be a buff of sorts to the light burn mechanic. A light burn is a mechanic for Wraith and Nurse, allowing you to stun them when they use their power. Nurse is hard currently because you can only do it when she charges a blink, so it's a very narrow window. I think it would be cool to make it constantly possible to light burn, giving urgency to blinks, and actually do a counterplay with the flashlight, or just make the window a bit larger. My change to shape would be that, when entering tier 3, when survivors become exposed, the survivor you stalk the most will scream, revealing their location. This both encourages you to target the person who got stalked the most, which is like, law fitting, <laughs> but also punishes them for giving you so much progress, drawing attention away from those who avoided you. My change to hag is kind of a weird one. When a general generator is completed, all traps within a 16 meter range are destroyed, so the sudden surge of light from the generator breaking them would be a cool mechanic, and a good reward for finishing a gen in the midst of a heavily set up hag area. I feel like I heard this one from somewhere else, I'm not quite sure. I don't remember where though. Regardless, I think it's a cool idea. For Doctor, I think it would be pretty funny to have more hallucination effects. They're one of the most entertaining parts of his power. It would be cool if they added fake breakable walls, fake hex totems, fake screams, and maybe even fake status effects that appear on your screen. I think that would be really fun. Maybe these effects could be picked through add-ons, on top of the current ones that are already attainable. For Huntress, I'm going to suggest another kind of weird change. I'd like to see her get a similar mechanic to Plague, where once all gens are completed, you get your power. For Huntress, this would be a full hatchet reload once all gens pop. I think that could be nice, giving you the ability to instantly pressure, and not have to worry about reloading. It wouldn't exactly come in handy every game either. It would just be this nice little passive help now and then. My change to Cannibal would be to add a higher potential for chain downs. For each survivor he downs with a chainsaw sweep, a charges return to the chainsaw to be used again. This I think would make the chainsaw super deadly, and allow for some far longer sweeps and cooler plays. Kind of like Blight's Alchemist Ring, except it's just one extra charge returned, and it's base kit. For Nightmare, I was actually talking about Freddy on Twitter, saying, now that Freddy's snares are kind of terrible, I feel dream palettes are more powerful now. A good response, and a good suggestion from a reply, was to just give him palettes as base kit, alongside his snares. I would honestly be kind of okay with that, if they just merged the two, and made it a singular power. That would certainly make Freddy at least a tiny bit more interesting than he is now, so I like that idea. For Pig, an idea I've heard going around is for her ambush to insta-down. I think this would make the attack far more rewarding, and also punishing, and could lead to some cool plays. It already has an incredibly long charge time, and it makes a noise before you move too. I feel an insta-down would honestly be fine. The clown change I think would be cool is actually one I heard whilst in a Not Starver stream from someone in chat, which is to allow clown to drink his yellow bottles instead of throwing them. This would allow you to instantly receive the haste effect whenever you wanted, without having to throw it down and wait for it to turn from white to yellow. Yeah, 
I like that idea. For Spirit, I have a weird suggestion, but basically, after coming out of a phase, Spirit doesn't do her passive flicker for, say, 5 to 10 seconds. This allowing you to have a more solid idea of where she is, especially just after she has exited her phase, where you really have very little idea of where she is. Kind of a small nerf to her passive phase. That's really a nitpick though. Something that could be cool for Legion is scaling up of speed for each survivor you hit in Feral Frenzy. This would play more into their greater speed and give a better reward for utilizing your power effectively. Say you start out with the current 5.2 meters per second, and then each time you hit a survivor, you go up by 0.5 meters per second. Personally, I think that would be really fun. My alteration for Plague is going to sound strange, but I think it could be interesting. Whenever you infect something from the environment, say a generator, a pallet, or a totem, it gives it a negative side effect of some kind. For example, an infected pallet only stuns at 90% of its effect than usual. If a generator is infected, skill checks are more frequent. If a totem is infected, then survivors cleansing it become oblivious. Stuff like that I think would be cool, and encourage you to infect the environment more. My ghost face change is to give him kind of a similar mechanic to Executioner, where after two hooks, he can mori a tormented survivor. With Ghosty, my idea is that if you manage to mark someone three times, you can mori them. This plays into his lore and the meticulous stalking element, and would be a good reason to make sure you don't get marked three times. At the moment, I feel there needs to be more fear surrounding his mark mechanic. Maybe it should be more like five times. My Demogorgon one may be a little controversial, but I would love to see the Red Moss add-on become base kit for Demo. Essentially, just give it a far longer duration of undetectable after emerging from a portal. I feel currently portals aren't scary enough, I guess. This longer duration would be such a nice change. I wouldn't change much about Oni. One thing I would like, though, is when you reach the maximum number of blood orbs on the ground, for them to be highlighted to you with an aura, allowing you to clear them out of areas in which you don't really need them, and therefore allow more to spawn. Maybe there could be a range of 32 meters or something to reveal the orbs once you hit the max amount. A significant bump from the base 8 meters that you always have. For Deathslinger, I'd like to see a small increase to his chain length. Currently it fires a maximum of 18 meters. I think that could be bumped to 24 meters. Given its drop off, and the ability to break the chain, I think this would be fine, while still rewarding a skillful longshot. My change to Executioner would simply be to have the trails in the ground not despawn, until you replace them with new ones. I feel at the moment they're best when you can set them up where you like. It feels like there shouldn't be a decay on them. Pyramid Head is largely very solid in my opinion. That's the one alteration I'd make. The change I would make to Blight would be a nerf. I would remove one of his base tokens from 5 to 4. This would help reduce the potency of Blighted Crow and Rat, and also Alchemist Ring. Twins is quite a simple change. I would really like to just have a near instant switch between Charlotte and Victor, allowing some potential for cool plays where you can coordinate a back-to-back -back attack. Yep, simple change there. For the Trickster, I simply want to be able to hold the main event attack. At the moment, you can hold it for like 30 seconds or something. I just want it to be there until I want to use it. My change for Nemesis would be to make his zombies have set paths that they deviate from only if there is a survivor, or something like a noise notification, because currently their pathing just seems inconsistent. <laughs> so a more consistent and predictable path would make them more reliable. My change for Cenobite would be to apply some kind of debuff to survivors who solve the box. Maybe a nemesis type effect, as in the perk, where when you teleport to the survivor, they become the obsession and they become oblivious for the next 60 seconds. I think that could be interesting. The artist I think is largely okay without providing a full rework or something. All I would change is the repel numbers on her swarms. The repel action I think should be 10 seconds instead of 8, and the aura duration should be 3 instead of 2.5. This would hopefully encourage more long range hits instead of trapping loops. For the Onryo, I'm going to avoid talking about the condemned mechanic 
because lots of people have mentioned that. One small change I would like for Sadako is for the bloody fingernails add-on to become base kid. This add-on increases the duration of your post projection speed boost by 50%. Having this on I feel is night and day with her when it comes to the strength of her power. Having this just really solidifies it and would be amazing as base kit I feel. Alright well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed and be sure to drop the changes you would make down below. Thanks and goodbye.